Let's explore the inferior aspect of the skull and as we take a look at these we're just going to walk through some of the markings. And I like to start from the anterior side so let's get oriented. There's the front of the skull, there's the posterior side. And so let's start with the anterior side. Uh, first things is the teeth. You can see all these things. You get the hard palate that's essentially made up of two bones, the maxilla and the uh, palatine bone. And you can imagine this is the horizontal plate of the maxilla and here's the horizontal plate of the palatine bones. Two thirds of it is maxilla, uh, about uh, maybe even a little less than that. Uh, one third is the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Right in between is this incisive for foss foramen. I always think incisors like a beaver right in between there. There's the incisive foramen. And then of course right here we get the two palatine foramens. Here's the greater one and then there are the lesser ones real small just on the other side here. So those are very small ones. Um, so that's the greater palatine and lesser palatine foramen. We then also find ourselves with these large kind of plates this is the medial and lateral medial and lateral pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone, both left and right. I always imagine a pterodactyl with his legs coming down. If you can imagine, if you see this, it looks like two legs coming down. And if you're a pterodactyl, you grab your prey with these. And so those are our pterygoid processes. And so medial and lateral plate, they're attachments for our muscles for chewing. We can also see the vomer, which is mostly the the inferior one-third or most of the posterior side of our nasal septum. And then here we are with some of the holes that we saw uh, from the internal cranial view. We see the foramen oval, we see the foramen lacerum. There's a little tiny foramen spinosum. Foramen rotundum is not here because it would be in the front or the anterior aspect. We also can see here this little piece. This is the carotid canal. And then there's the jugular foramen with the jugular fossa. Imagine the jugular fossa being like a cup, and then you punch a hole in the bottom of the cup, and there's the foramen. Okay, so that's the jugular fossa with the jugular foramen. And then right next to it is this little hole that's underneath the occipital condyles. You can see how it kind of races underneath. This is the hypoglossal canal, and this is where the hypoglossal nerve will come through. And then next to the foramen magnum, right next to these little rounded things called the occipital condyles. Yes, you have the condylar fossa and the foramen in sometimes or front condylar uh, canals, uh, but that's all right. Uh, otherwise, we also have these two large mass-like structures called the mastoid process, and then right in front of it is these really sharp, ouch, uh, this one's not as formed as a really young skull here, but a very sharp spinous process with in between what we call the stylo mastoid foramen, and that's nice, stylo mastoid foramen. What holds in between the styloid process and mastoid process? The styloid mastoid foramen. And so I personally like to go also just for the holes. Um, we look at all the structures here uh, in terms of like uh, holes. I like the biggest hole, foramen magnum, and then you get the occipital condyles. So foramen magnum with the occipital condyles uh, where it articulates so you can shake up and down. And then underneath, like hypo, hypo, hypo means below. So hypoglossal, granted that means below the tongue, but underneath the condyles I always think hypoglossal and then it goes jugular and carotid. Those are our two big blood vessels that go to the head. So if you go foramen magnum, hypoglossal canal with the jugular and carotid canal right there, uh, that is a nice kind of pattern. You get all these and you can name them all and then you get the other smaller ones that we see, spinosum, oval, and lacerum. Last couple things, you can kind of see like the superior nuchal line up here. This one really doesn't have an external occipital protuberance because it's a female skull, so they don't really have as big of ones as males do. Inferior nuchal line, or right across the external occipital protuberance, you get the superior nuchal line, and then here is the inferior nuchal line. You kind of see these lines here and here. And then um, other than that, you can see the zygomatic arch here. Uh, off of the zygomatic bone, it's the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. Part of the reason why we say that is because it would make no sense for me to say zygomatic process of the zygomatic bone because where is that located? You don't know, it's, it's anywhere on the zygomatic bone. But if I said temporal process of the zygomatic bone, well you know that that process is the one that jumps towards the temporal bone. And so that's why this is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And the, the same way we have the temporal pro, or the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and when they join they make the zygomatic arch. Last thing here is the nice shallow depression for where the mandible rests, that is the mandibular fossa on the temporal bone. So let's review. On the anterior side, incisive foramen with the horizontal plate of the maxilla and the horizontal plate of the palatine bone with the greater and lesser palatine foramen. The vomer, here's the lateral and medial pterygoid plates, medial and lateral pterygoid plates. Here's the zygomatic bone with its temporal process, temporal process of the zygomatic bone. 
zygomatic process of the temporal bone with the making the zygomatic arch. The two pits here are the mandibular fossa. We get the foramen, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, foramen lacerum. And then we go through all these other holes, frame and magnum, and underneath the, the condyles is the hypoglossal canal. And then it goes jugular frame and jugular fossa, carotid canal, and then we get the mastoid process here, and the styloid process would be a lot sharper if it was a little bit more developed. And in between is the stylomastoid foramen. We have the inferior nuchal line, superior nuchal line with the external occipital protuberance here. And then, of course, the condylar fossas and the occipital condyles leading to the occipital canal.